All right, uh, this lesson is on tables and graphs. So last time we looked at the basics of statistics, all right? So you've got different different things that you do. You've got different types of studies. You've got different types of samples. Uh, and what you do is, you know, you go out and you collect data. Uh, now, in, in a practical sense, this could be, uh, let's say I'm on Facebook and, and I and I make a post and and I want to and I want to see how many people uh, like my post within a five hour period, right? Uh, I'm collecting data and I can and I can I can say I can see who's liking the data and so on and so forth. So I get all this data and then what do I do? You know, do I just have a bunch of numbers, right? It, and typically it doesn't make sense. So to make sense of the data that you collect. You can represent it. One of the first things that you typically do is represent that data in, in, in a visual form. So, and that's what tables and graphs do. They just, they just provide a way for us to organize our data, All right? And so in this lesson, I'm going to cover maybe five or six different ways to, to cover data. We've got frequency and relative frequency tables, bar graphs, and Pareto charts, pie charts, histograms, line charts. So I'm gonna take one set of data, right? And I'm gonna show you how to organize that data maybe five or six different ways. It's real simple, um, but you kinda have to, uh, typically have to uh, take your time, have a, have a plan, and the rest of it's easy. So let's look at our data set. We've got Gallons of gas purchased by 28 drivers. Again, if you just look at the data set, it's just a list of numbers. It's not telling us anything other than uh, just values. So what we want to do is we want to organize this. And the way we organize this, the first way we do it is it's called a frequency table. Uh, and, and, and some people call it a relative frequency table. I'm going to combine that. All right, so a frequency table the way I'm going to show it to you is I'm going to show you a frequency table and a relative frequency table at, in, in, at one time. Um, now, the definitions, you can read them, but frequency table has two columns. You've got your categories and your counts, and then another one. Well, really, you've got your categories, uh, and you have what's called bins, and then you have the counts. A relative frequency is the same thing, but then it tells you percentages. So let's look at the example, and I think it'll provide a better overview. All right, so here we go. We've got those 28 values. Um, and if you go back a couple slides and you count, like this, these values on this left, these are called bins, right? Uh, or baskets, if you want to use something that's more relatable. And it's basically asking this first bin, one to four, it's asking how many people purchased between one and four gallons of gas. And if you go back to the 28 values that we had listed two slides ago, there were nine people. All right, then you go to the next bin. How many people purchased between five and eight gallons of gas? I'm sorry, not, not nine people, but eight people. And then the same thing between nine and 12 gallons, eight people. Between 13 and 16 gallons of gas, two people. And then between 17 and 20 gallons of gas, one person. All right, now those two columns, that's a frequency table. That's it. Now to add the relative frequency table, all we're going to do is take our frequency and divide it by how many people. So we know we had, in our data set, we had 28 people. So all you do is 9 over 28. Now, I'm going to re represent these as simplified fractions. I'm assuming that everybody can convert these things to percents and the decimals, okay? So depending on the problem that you're trying to, to solve or work out, they'll give instructions. They may say, 
express your answer as a simplified fraction. They may say express your answer as a percent. They may say express your answer as a decimal. So relative frequency can be a decimal, it can be a fraction, and or it could be a percent. All right, it just depends on the instructions. All right, so I go to the next bin. So this will be eight out of 28, and we simplify this guy, and this becomes two out of seven, because four goes into eight two times, four goes into 28 seven times. So this next one will be eight out of 28. It simplifies to two out of seven. All right, then we go two out of 28. We simplify that. It's one out of 14. And then this last piece, it's one out of 28. And that just stays, it can't be simplified. All right, now let me say this. This relative frequency should always add up to, in this case, should be 28. If you want to check, 28 out of 28. All right, so you can add all up. up. All these values should be 28 out of 28, which is the same thing as 1, which is the same thing as 100%. All right, and that's how you can check. Now, you don't have to do it, but that's a good way to check that you didn't miss a value. All right, and then this next piece was called cumulative frequency. And all this is is you're running total, okay? That's all it is. It's just a count. So this first bin, this first row, all right, it says, what's the frequency here? All right, we start out with nine values. Then we go to the bin, the next bin. We want to run in total. We had nine to begin with. We added eight more. That's 17. Okay, then we go to the next bin. We had 17. We add another eight. It's 25. Go to the next bin. We had 25. We added 2, it's 27. And go to that last, I guess you say row. So we had 27, we added 1, it's 28. So we had 28, we had 28 people in our sample, so we did everything correctly. No problem. So, so your cumulative frequency is typically where students struggle it's because they don't remember that it's a running total. So just start with your first row, add the next row. And, and then when you get down to the end, just make sure that your final number matches your sample size. All right, now next, you've got a frequency table. And now we want to represent this data in, an, in another form, OK? So first one, you got bar graphs. Everybody's seen a bar graph uh, before. So it's just, you got your frequencies or your bin sizes and then the counts. That's all you're doing, all right? A Pareto chart is basically a bar graph that's in order from high to low, all right? So all the bars are decreasing from left to right. So let's look at the bar graph for the data we just had. Same data uh, and notice you know, your bin size, one to four, had nine. All right, five to, five to eight gallons, had eight. Nine to 12 gallons, had eight. 13 to 16 gallons, had two. And then 17 to 20 gallons, had one. That's everything that was in that frequency table. It's just how we represented the data. That's the only thing that's different. So that's, that's just counts. Now we're gonna move on to a pie chart, all right? So now a pie chart is exactly what it, what it says. You gotta think of a pie or a circle. 
all right? And the wedges correspond to the relative frequencies, okay? So let's, let's look at this graph, all right? Notice, if you look at the, and I didn't convert, I didn't convert the, uh, the fractions for relative frequency to percentages, but it's, these are the exact same thing, I believe. 32% was, I believe that was nine out of 28, all right? So one to four gallons. Five to eight was eight out of 28. That's 29%, all right? Uh, nine to 12 gallons was the same thing. That was eight out of 28. Uh, 7%, this was two out of 28. And then the 17 to 20 gallons was one out of 28. All right, the big thing with pie charts is notice the larger the frequency or the relative frequency, the larger portion of the chart, all right, that, that, that Ben has. So, you know, 32% shouldn't have half the chart, you know. So when you draw these or, or you're reading them or you're selecting them from a multiple, multiple choice type problem, make sure that the wedges correspond to the percentages correctly, okay. All right, so now we're gonna move on to a histogram, I believe. All right, so a histogram, it's just like your bar graph. The only thing that's different is the histogram is on a number line. So, so instead of having spaces in between your bars, all your bars are, there's no space because number lines on a continuum, okay? So let me show you the example um, so you can see it. All right, now notice my histogram changed a little bit because I couldn't, I couldn't get the bend sizes to work out, so I had to redo the bend sizes. So it's gonna look a little different. It's not gonna look exactly like the bar graphs. All right, but notice, and I'm gonna I'm a highlight the important part here. All right, well, let me, let me try this. Your, your x-axis, okay? So we'll call this your y-axis. This is your x-axis, all right? So you basically have a continuum. So from zero all the way over to about 20, all right? Those, that's a number line. So there's no gaps in between. That's, that's what these brackets mean. Two to six and all of these brackets, all right? six and they're just putting endpoints on there so so I started at two I ended at six for this first one I went to six which was my edge I went to ten but just remember on a on a histogram that you're on a continuum all right so that's the big difference just like a bar graph uh, and if I would have done this by hand I could have made it look a little bit better but I used Excel for this uh, and it wasn't working with me too well. All right, so that's, that's a histogram. And then finally, you have what's called, again, same data, uh, but now we have what's called a line chart. And basically what it does, it, it shows, it's, it, it's, you can think like a histogram a little bit, but it shows each category as a point connected by a line. So again, you've got your label, frequency, or you can, you got the count, and then you got the gallons of gas, okay? And, and all we did was, it says how many times did, did I have two gallons of gas? So that's a point. And then uh, you got all these different points on the graph. And that may be a point. But that's, that's, that's what a line chart does. You just have a series of points. And I'll see if I can erase these points. But that's what a line chart is. All right, so to summarize, you can use, you can have one set of data and you can create any variety of, or you have a full range of options to represent the data. 
All right. And so anytime you're, you're representing data, you always have to think about uh, your audience. OK, so for certain audiences, uh, they they may require or one particular audience may require something that's different. Uh, it, and so in this case, we've got six options. Uh, probably the, the the best option if if I was uh, the owner of the gas station, probably the bar graph, right? Because uh, line charts will make sense if, if you're talking about time. But the bar graph, if I'm just trying to get a, a rough estimate of what's happening, uh, that bar graph may be enough. Um, pie chart may be good. Um, so it, just always keep that in mind. Don't don't get in a rush and, and, and think that, oh, I can just use, use them all. And, some people, the frequency table may have been just enough. So always keep in mind that the audience will dictate in some ways um, how you represent your data. I hope this helps.